guys, I'm Ozzy Villain, and today I'm going to be reviewing Football Manager 2023. Uh, now, I do daily Football Manager videos, so if you're interested in uh, what you see here, then uh, make sure you subscribe so you can see uh, see me every day. Uh, there's fate worse than death sometimes, isn't there? Uh, but let's start with, uh, with well, let's go and have a look at the game, shall we? This is it. I mean, the first impressions are that it does look very similar. Uh, this is a save I've been doing with Aston Villa uh, just through the beta period. Now, the main features of the game, now, they weren't particularly, I don't think, sold well. There's been a lot of uh, controversy, I suppose, about whether it's actually uh, is a new game or just uh, sort of a reworked FM22. Uh, well, let's have a look. The first major feature was Squad Planner. Now, this is actually, I think, quite a decent uh, decent feature. Uh, it certainly, I think, will make life easier for a lot of us anyway. Um, you can see here, so you have that sort of by position and you know different players where they sit in your squad planner but i think what what makes it worthwhile is uh is that you can sort of go to next season and the season after that so you can see signings that we have coming in i can sort of put where you know where they sit in the uh, in the thing you can change it between formations so it does just sort of make it a lot easier to and players that are out on loan that are coming back on loan as well so i think this is a really nice a really nice thing to help you you know, plan the, the succession of your squad. So, you know, you can go on to the season after next as well. So if someone's aging, they can kind of become less important and, uh, you know, you can it can sort of plan accordingly. So it is a nice a nice uh, adding to the game. And what else I think is that it can come uh, kind of like a hub as well, because if you go here to create new focus, if you want to uh, get a new striker, and that you can set up a scouting focus from directly inside uh, inside the, scout, the, the squad planner as well, which is, again, just something that's... Uh, just makes it nice and easy. So is it a major feature to a game? Probably not. Does it make the game better? I would say yes. Yeah, it definitely does. And this is as good a reason as any to go and have a look. Scouting has also been updated in the game. Now, it's again, it's a, it's just it's just a little bit nicer, I find. If you go to scouting coverage, uh, it sort of it shows you here that you know your knowledge around the world. You can go to uh, here to world knowledge. This is where it'll show you a little bit easier. Now you can search uh, through via regions or just via individual nations as well. So you can see what actual countries you have scouted, and you can see they're basically unrestricted. Um, means you know the country very well uh, and then it sort of goes down a little bit from there now it's behind my head so it's not particularly useful for you but the, you can see it's color coded as well so that gives you a, a bit of a better idea uh, so yeah I think this is a this is a nice and a bit easier to sort of see uh, you know what sort of coverage you have uh, you can also get match reports as well which is not necessarily new but it's all sort of it's all in that same area uh, now the the recruitment focus is something that is a little bit different you can see here uh, we, where we're scouting so England Scotland Italy uh, which is a little bit different or it's not necessarily different but it's a little bit easier to see where you're scouting I suppose and then you can go and create a focus in here again and and basically scout you know you can scout by position now you can also scout, uh, you can see here all sort of scouting recommendations sort of come up in a little bit of an easier thing uh, to sort of visually see. You can also still get the old, uh, if you go to scouting center, you still get the old style sort of scouting cards, which I like personally, but maybe that's not quite for everybody. Uh, but you can see here, you can also get it as the list as well. So that's just a preference thing, which is nice. You know, preference of like giving you options is obviously a good thing as well. And then if you want to scout or change a, a recruitment uh, focus, now I tend to let the, the chief scout do it. But for example here, you'll just click on, on Scotland uh, areas we want to scout. And then you, sort of the same as you always have, you can basically scout anywhere. Uh, you can see there the recently selected. You can scout by continent, by region, by nation, uh, or obviously by competition as well. So yeah, I mean, it's it's not completely different but it's definitely it's again it's sort of uh, i guess evolution rather than revolution and again i think it's just made it's just made the game a little bit a little bit easier to navigate a little bit better i think scouting is definitely a little bit more fun now than it potentially used to be and it's all sort of as an integrator with the squad planner which is a bit of a nice touch as well now the data hub is or data hub depending on where you're from has had a bit of a, an upgrade as well now i tend to not use it that in depth uh to be honest but it's all sort of you can, just more visually you can see uh you can see things sort of these sorts of uh what sort of i don't know what sort of graph that is but those sorts of graphs that all look very pretty yeah so if you if this is your thing you, you know it's upgrade that it's a little bit easier to read if it's not then like you are a little bit more like me i mean it's something you can look into at some point but it takes a little some of the fun out of it for me but some people they love it and it's going to be improved for you 
Now, the other thing that has been, uh, I guess, released as a feature is not just uh, the board vision, uh, which is which is not anything different to how it has been. And you can see here, it gives you a bit more of an overview of how the board see things. This is sort of more of a, a just general overview of the club, to be honest. And uh, you can see you can make board requests from here as well as from the the, you know, the overview thing we used to be able to. It's up here though. It's changed the position just to just to confuse everybody. But you can also get supporters. Now this I again it's a nice touch and I like it. Um, I've played I've sunk a few seasons into the beta and you can see that it gives you a percentage of your hardcore fans, your core fans, family uh, fans, fair weather, corporate, and the casuals. Difference between a casual and a fair weather. I'm not completely sure. I don't know if a fair weather fan sort of turns up when you're winning and a casual fan sort of checks the scores maybe. Um, but while well, they're not actually in the stadium. I guess it's a representation of the percentage. But you see here you've got social media coverages, uh, uh, followers as well, season ticket holders and the and uh, those wanting uh, to be on a wait list or on a waiting list. So I, I like this. I do like this. And so you can sort of, it might be that you are popular with the fans or not the board or vice versa, depending on what their expectations are. And they are different as well. Uh, it's, it's not necessarily the same thing. You can see here just at, at Villa, they want a top half finish uh, that is required, but the board wanted a, uh, where are we here? They wanted a Europa League finish. If we go here, yeah, qualify for the Europa League. So the the expectations between the board and uh, and the supporters are different. And if you go to supporters here as well, you can see Aston have a large fan base. They have a low level of influence on the board. But I've uh, I've played as other clubs where they've had a high level of influence on the board. So. If the fans, you know, influence the board, then you're going to want to make sure that they're just as happy, possibly if not more happy than the board. Because if the fans are happy, even if the board's not necessarily happy, they may not, they may not sack you. So it adds another level, which I like. But uh, yeah, it's a, again a major feature, a big upgrade on FM22. You could argue not. Now, so far, it feels like I've been a little bit down on the game. Without a doubt, the big improvement on uh, over any any uh, FM that I've had is uh, it's definitely the match engine. Now the graphics, are they much improved? Are they anything improved? Not really, but the actual, the actual dynamics, the, 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 the way that the players move and interact on the, on the, uh, in the game and the match engine are absolutely amazing. It is, it is not enough was made of it. You know, there's a lot of it made about the, you know, a dynamic manager timeline, which again, it's, you see it at the end of a season and not really again. And it's, 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 I mean, again, it's okay. It's not. That's, that's not worse. It doesn't make the game worse. But it's. It's. If it wasn't there, no one, I don't think, would particularly care. Having the, the you know, the, the Champions League, the UEFA uh, licenses. Again, it's. It's. I haven't actually played a game in Europe, but I've seen other people that have. And you know, the music plays and it's, it's the graphics and it's all very nice. But it's. It's just nice. It doesn't necessarily add that much to the game. You, I wouldn't say I'll go out and buy the game because it has UEFA licenses. What I would say though is the match engine is much, much improved. I mean, you can see here just, you know, the first touches are varied. Uh, there's heavy touches, you know, there's the ball bobbles, it bounces. You can see, uh, you know, the players control the ball in different ways. And I just, I, it's just brilliant. It really, really is fantastic. So I, I, I mean, I absolutely love it. I love watching games now. Before you kind of you'd, you'd play the game, and you know it was good. Obviously, it's sort of the, the, the well for me anyway, the most exciting part of the game. But it was just it, 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 it little felt a little bit like you. It was just a way to get to the next transfer window. Uh, but the game's now absolutely brilliant. It's just I've never. It's almost not quite as good as watching a game in real life. But it it, it really. I don't know. I you can tell probably really really do love the new match engine so now for the moment of truth should you buy fm23 uh honestly if you are enjoying your save in fm22 maybe hold off hold off wait till it goes on sale and pick it up then it's it, is it a worse game than fm22 no it is a better game it is a better game for sure it's i thought fm22 was the best uh, fm ever and this is it's definitely an improvement so I wouldn't say don't buy it. And if uh, you know if you're FM21 or or, be, or lower, you know, since or older, since you've bought an upgraded version, then maybe yeah, maybe this is this it's it's worth going out. Uh, but like I say, if you're currently playing FM22 and you're enjoying your save right now, this I wouldn't say you have to rush out and buy it by any means. But it is worth buying at some point, in my opinion. And yeah, just I mean, but it is just the match engine alone. That is the everything else is nice, but that is just 
it really does just make it that much better so yeah i hope that's been helpful for you if it has make sure you hit thumbs up if you are new subscribe and if you want to see me uh playing the game a little bit more in depth i have a series with aston villa up and when the game drops proper and i should say this is the beta as well so things may change from when the full release but if you do want to once that happens uh we'll be trying to win the champions league with an icelandic club and uh well that should be worth watching if nothing else take care